it's a big concern. Have you seen this? People are being forced out of their homes. Now, I'm not talking about foreclosures, bank owned. I'm not talking about people that own property and they're behind in their mortgage. I'm talking about renters. I'm talking about people that rent apartments, people that rent houses. And the reason why they're having to move out of the property is quite alarming. You see, people that own these properties, the landlords, the individuals, the corporations, they're selling off their real estate. They're selling off their properties. And, and there's a couple of reasons why. One, property values have not come down in most parts of the country. Now, don't get me wrong. There's places out in California. There's places up northeast where we're seeing some adjustments in prices and coming down. But for the most part, landlords can sell their property. But it's not so much as they want to sell their properties as they have to sell the property. So go with me here. Everything is going up. I'm sure you'll agree. You've probably seen it. Homeowners insurance has went up. Taxes are going up tax year because what happens is the evaluation of the property is worth more money and since it's worth more money what does the government do what is your local city and county and parish they want to tax you based on the value of your current property it doesn't matter if you're a property owner it doesn't matter if you're an individual landlord personal property owner you're going to have to pay more in property taxes so your taxes go up your insurance goes up if you're in a flood zone your flood insurance goes up if you're paying HOA dues, your HOA dues go up. So you, you get where I'm coming from here. So as an individual owner of these properties, everything goes up. Now, if you have a mortgage on top of that, then a lot of these landlords are just looking at it and going, maybe we should just sell. Maybe we shouldn't renew the lease. We only have one property or three properties or seven properties, or we're seeing corporations do this with apartment complexes. They're turning apartment complexes into condominiums. So instead of just renewing leases, they're telling people in Atlanta and Miami and New Orleans and all around the country that they have to be out of their property. And it's quite alarming. So the other reason, the other reason why we're seeing it is the fact that when these property owners have a mortgage, it's called a commercial loan. And so when you get a commercial loan on a piece of property and you're paying the mortgage on that property, when you sign up to purchase that property and you agree to that mortgage, there's typically what they call a three to a five year call on that mortgage. That means you typically only pay a set rate and then maybe one point over prime as they call it. So here's what happens. When that loan comes call due, in other words, it's not like your traditional fixed rate mortgage where you put it on a 30 year amortization and it's fixed and it doesn't change. When you buy multiple properties and you buy commercial properties, it's all considered like a commercial loan. So banks reserve the right in the fine print to, to call that loan due. And the reason why they do it is banks pretty much run the country, right? I mean, they're the ones with the money. They're the ones loaning consumers money to buy properties. As a result, when that loan comes called due, guess what the rates have done? They've doubled. Mortgage interest rates have physically literally doubled in, in, in literally a year. And so when you buy a piece of investment property, you're gonna pay a little bit more in interest than if it's just your traditional single family home that you're buying to live in. So could imagine you purchase a property and it 6% and now they want to charge you eight and a half percent. So now your mortgage is going to go up if you refinance it. Your taxes are going up. Your insurance is going up. You get what I'm saying? So they're looking at this as maybe we should just sell it. Maybe we could take this apartment complex. These 30 units can be uh, conversed and transferred into condominiums and we can just sell them all off. The other factor that you have to consider is it's not something that they necessarily want to do. The other reason is they're having to raise the rents just to cover the cost. Now, don't get me wrong. We all work for a reason to make money and to make a profit. We all get that. We have to survive. We all have to survive. But what happens is when your mortgage and all of that information, all that goes up, then you have to raise your rent because I've talked to landlords all around the country. I've talked to property owners and investors all around the country. And they say, Wayne, if we don't go up a minimum of 20%, we, we don't, we can't afford it. Like, like it's either we go up in the rent or they're going to take the property back in foreclosure because 
we're having to make up the difference in what the tenant is paying us in rent for our mortgage on the property. So as a result, they're having to go up on the rents on the property and they're going up in record rates, 20 to 30%. So what they're doing is they're giving people an option saying, hey, you can stay, but here's what the new rent is going to be. And you're seeing the rent go up. And that's why it's so important to consider buying a property. And I tell folks, listen, I don't have anything to sell you, but I have a lot to tell you. I've been in the real estate business for 28 years and I can assure you, and I'll tell you a quick story here in just a second. I can assure you buying a piece of property and it doesn't matter to me if you buy a property for me or one of the 88,000 agents that I have all around the country. What's most important is that you buy a piece of property, even if it's just one property that you can personally live in. And here's the reason why. I'll never forget the day that my mom and dad told me we're buying a house. It was exciting for me. As a 14 year old kid, I thought, that's awesome. I get to really crank up the music now. That was back in the eighties. And I thought we're gonna jam now, right? Buying a house. But what they did was they bought a house and we lived in that house for five years. They turned around and sold that house after five years. They made $25,000. They took that $25,000 and they put that down on a, on a much larger house. Now, it wasn't twice as large, but it was about a thousand or so square foot larger. And their payment didn't go up that much because they took that $25,000 and put it down on their new house. And you didn't have to pay taxes on the money. You're buying another house, was rolling that. So you don't pay taxes on that money. That's your money. That's your money. You can do whatever you want to with it. But I always advise rolling it into another piece of property. So they did just that. Now, the people that bought the house from my parents in 1991, 32 years ago, they still own that home. And that home is paid for. They do not have a mortgage on that property anymore. It's paid for that property that they purchased for $75,000 32 years ago is now worth about $320,000. So you can see, you're gonna to have to pay for somewhere to live anyway. And so why not get to the point where you own a piece of property, you're paying the mortgage on the property, especially when you've heard me talk about videos, I have videos out there that USDA.gov the federal government, the United States government is giving you down payment money. If you make under $110,000, you need to consider looking at buying a piece of property because we have agents that work with you to get your closing costs paid. It doesn't cost you any money out of pocket. So the people that bought the house from mom and dad, right? They've owned the home for 32 years. The home is now paid for. They do not have a mortgage. The house is worth $320,000. They bought it for 75. So you can see they don't have a mortgage payment anymore. The house is paid for, and if they needed the cash, they could easily pull out $250,000 or sell the property. You have that option. You don't wanna wake up when you're in your 50s or 60s or 70s and not have a tangible asset that is yours. A lot of people see this and they go, wow, Wayne, I'm gonna buy more than one property. I'm gonna buy multiple properties. And I have friends all around the country that have done that. They've bought small starter houses all around the country and they've held on to those starter houses and they've put tenants in those starter houses and 20, 30 years goes by and next thing you know, they're multi-millionaires. I just can't emphasize enough. I don't have anything to sell you. I'm not selling you a product or anything like that. We have a service of helping people purchase real estate and it doesn't cost a consumer, a buyer, if you're looking to purchase a property, any money out of pocket, because we are compensated. We are paid as real estate agents. We all work hand in hand. So we're paid as real estate agents by the listed real estate company. When you see a for sale sign on the yard, that homeowner has met with the real estate company with the sign on the yard, house on the market, Zillow, realtor.com. And there's a brokerage fee that has been negotiated between the listed brokerage company and the homeowner and the listed brokerage company puts it into MLS, which goes to realtor.com and Zillow. And then from there, they share it with all real estate agents and say, hey, if you have a buyer for this property that we have listed, we will gladly share with you the percentage of compensation that the seller's paying us to sell the property. And that's why we're called cooperating brokers. So we have a listing side of the sale and a buyer side of the sale. 
it's just so important to know that you can buy a property for literally very little money out of pocket. You can get an FHA loan and it only costs you three and a half percent. You can purchase a house that way. And once again, we get the seller to pay your closing cost. So three and a half percent, you get to purchase a house. You don't have to purchase a house. I just think it's so important, me personally as a real estate broker, I have a fiduciary duty to explain to people the importance of home ownership, the importance of buying a piece of property, the importance of having that goal, having that. Because look, the people that bought that house for my mom and dad, they still live in it 32 years ago. It's paid for, no one can take it away from them. They have taxes, of course, that they have to pay, not getting away from that. And you have insurance that you'll wanna have on the property in case, Lord forbid, a tornado or fire were to happen to the property. But for the most part, that's it. Like, it's hard to rent anywhere for less than twelve to $1,300 a month. So when in doubt, buy one house. Thank you for watching. I hope you got a lot of good information from this. And if there's anything ever we can do to help, if you need to be connected with one of our agents, you can reach out to us, 985-626-1313. I'll put my numbers here in this post. And once again, thank you and God bless.